طلاب العربية طالبات العربية أهلا وسهلا بكم في المنحة درسنا اليوم الدرس الثاني والعشرون العناصر الأساسية والمتممات يعني essential parts of a sentence and complementary parts of a sentence الجملة تنقسم إلى عناصر أساسية ومتممات فالعناصر الأساسية لا يمكن الاستغناء عنها يعني the sentence will not be sound grammatically without these parts if you take any part it would not be complete المتممات are complements the way you complement a the sentence they're not essential to the grammar of the sentence they're important in meaning but if you take them away, the sentence would still be sound grammatically. Now look at these two examples where we have العناصر الأساسية in the first part and then المتممات in the second part. The first example, ذاكر الطلاب في المكتبة ليلة. So, the essential part has the verb, it's a جملة فعلية starting with a verb, and الطلاب which is the subject of the sentence, and by themselves, they make actually enough of a grammatical unit. Now, at the library in the evening are complements here. They add the sense of time and place to the sentence, but they're not essential to the grammar. Now look at the second sentence. The truth is, is qara'a can stand by itself in certain cases. In this case, what we have is قرأنا So, نحن, the subject is implied in the verb. What did we read? مقالة, that's مفعول به, it's the object. Now, طويلة just adds a bit of meaning to مقالة. It's a long article that we read. لم نفهمها جيدا comes as جملة صفة. It's a relative clause basically telling you that we did not understand well. So, this part here is also من المتممات. In addition to المتممات والعناصر الأساسية, a very important way of looking at the way words are grouped also is الجملة شبه الجملة ومجموعة ألفاظ. So الجملة is actually the full sentence, right? مفيدة في المعنى ومكتملة في النحو. يعني the meaning has to be complete in it, and also grammatically speaking, it has to stand as a full sentence. مثال تدرس أستاذة التاريخ صفين. The female professor of history teaches two classes or two courses. Now, شبه الجملة في العربية is of two types, and it's really the closest thing to a phrase. A ظرف. When you use some of these words like أمام قبل بين in these expressions أمام البيت قبل المساء بين بلدين. The combination of the word amama and the noun that's following it, in this case al-bayti, make up shibah jumla. Now the other type of shibah jumla is jarrun wa majrurun. Yani a prepositional phrase, where you would have a preposition followed by a noun. Fil bayti, ala tawilati min al bidayati. Now, majmu'atul al-fad fil arabi, a group of words, words can group in several ways. They could be al-badal, which is the apposition. Now, what's an apposition? Apposition generally is a word that comes after another where either one of them could equally do the function and the grammatical function. If you said, for example, the president of the United States, and then you name the president X or Y, actually president of the United States and X and Y are equal. Or my friend Mahmoud came yesterday. My friend and Mahmoud, Mahmoud is an apposition to my friend. The sentence would stand either with my friend or with Mahmoud. So, هذه الفكرة هؤلاء الأولاد هذان الصديقان يعني you could say هذه without saying الفكرة a new sentence would stand. هؤلاء الأولاد يحبون كرة القدم You can say هؤلاء يحبون كرة القدم and it will be a complete sentence. الإضافة which we studied, of how you combine a string of nouns, either two or more, to have a kind of relationship between the two. فالإضافة مثلا أستاذة التاريخ مضاف مضاف إليه وجهة نظر 
You see, it's indefinite. Ilafa can be indefinite, and it's made of those two parts. Then, last majmuat al fath could be a noun adjective phrase. Al ismu wa sifatu. So, a noun followed by an adjective after it. Ustadatun ilaqiyatun. Al sadiqul jadidu. So, indefinite, indefinite, feminine, feminine, singular, singular, right? Uh, uh, an Iraqi female professor. Al sadiqul jadidu, the new friend. طلابي طالباتي شكرا لكم على انتباهكم وأراكم في الدرس القادم إن شاء الله